Are we there? Oh, are we there? Yay! Ah, hold on. Ah, oh, Changs. How you all doing? Good to see yous. It's great to be in God's house this morning. Welcome to worship. It is so good to gather here. And for those that are gathering at home, you are very welcome to our time together too. Now, notices, I don't think there's anything dramatic notices. The usual, um, you don't have to book in. The Pitt Cairn Centre's open. Get your cup of tea there. Welcome, welcome. Don't, nobody saw you sneak in. You're absolutely fine. Right in the front row, the cruelty. I remember going to church and I was a complete, I had buggies and bags and they said, oh, let us take you to your seat. And they took me right to the front row. I was like, you kidding me? So welcome, welcome. Good to have you here. Usual notices. Um, I'm sure they've been on screen. Oh, readers wanted. Perfect. We love hearing different voices in our worship. We know that as we gather as a family, it's not about one person at the front. It's about all of us participating. Previously, um, Moira had hoodwinked people who had booked in. She knew who was coming and got their names on a list. But now that we no longer need to book, um, Moira's going to find new ways of hoodwinking you into doing the reading. Um, however, we would love if you were able to volunteer. Um, and we're not looking for expert readers. We're not looking for the most eloquent. Um, we have a fabulous sound system. So even if you've got a quiet voice, we can turn you up. Or if you've got a really loud voice, we can turn you down. But it would be lovely to have as many people as possible on our list for readers. Thank you. Um, last week, our theme was the glorious passage of Jesus feeding the 5,000. And we have another food-related theme this week. So our call to worship is that glorious passage from Psalm 34. Taste and see that God is good. Blessed are those who take refuge in him. Come, my children. Listen to me, I will teach you fear of the Lord. Let's take a moment to pray. Father God, thank you that you are indeed good. We pray as we gather this morning that we would taste of your goodness. That as your children, we would listen to all that you have to say to us. In Jesus' name, amen. Oh, it gives me great pleasure to introduce our next, our first song of worship, which is going to be played on the organ. Woo! Yay! You got a cheer there, Ian. We are so we are so over YouTube. Let me tell you, to have a musician come and play live for us is a real joy. And we know it's still a bit rubbish that we're wearing our masks, but as with everything, we're just grateful for whatever we can do. So let us stand together as we sing our first hymn of worship, Guide Me, O Thy Great Jehovah.
Oh, brilliant. Whew. Good stuff. Now, for those gathered last week, you'll remember in our prayers for others, we had a real focus on the ministry of working with young people and with children and how much we missed having children and families in our morning worship. So it's great to see you guys here. Ryan, it's great to see you. And I mean, it just takes one kid and I'm all for a children's talk. I can't help myself. So we're bringing it back. Oh, yeah. Such a good day, so much exciting things happening. Now, when we're in the car, driving home maybe from football or from event, um, and the kids are starving, they are like radar eyes looking for certain signs of where they might get something to eat. So I have done my very own, do you know, you can have the, all the fancy slides you like, but... I have been using my artistic skills this morning. So, the first one's nice and easy. Where do you think you may be going if you saw this logo? McDonald's, I know it. It looks just like that, doesn't it? Brilliant. Did you know that one? Do you like going there? Yeah. Have you had McDonald's before? Oh, do you know what? So have I. Okay, let's see what we're going. <laughs> okay, now this one. This one is a bit of a Friday night. Your clues, Friday night. What's that one? Dominoes. Did you know that? Ah, oh, bro. Do you like a Dominoes? We're more of a Papa John family, I have to say. Yeah. Oh, see. Yeah. No, we prefer it. We had a dodgy Dominoes once. So I'm not doing any kind of. This is an advertising here, by the way. Okay, so this one's pretty ridiculous. I mean, they're all ridiculous, don't get me wrong. What do we think? KFC, KFC. what do you think, Ryan? Are you impressed? Could you have done better? <laughs> oh, thanks for that. Do you like, who likes KFC? Who likes KFC? Anybody else? Couple of KFC? I had my first KFC, actually, when we were on our holidays, and um, we went to Dundee for KFC. So that was quite exciting. Right, the last one. Now, this is, the grown-ups might appreciate this one more than the kids. Although, if you take kids, you're going to have to take your credit card because this place is very expensive. Who know? Uh huh. Starbucks. Who's a Starbucks fan? Local. We've got a Costa. You know. Oh, see, no, the kids go and they get like frappuccinos with hundreds of cream, and it's like eight hundred pounds. So, Starbucks. Could you tell? Do, do you, that's not bad. It's not bad. Do you like Starbucks? I love a Starbucks. I, I used to work for Starbucks, so um, you can see I've seen this logo quite a lot. So we have all these cool places we could go if we're ready for coffee or if we fancy some chicken or pizza. There's these places that we can go to be fed. And this morning, as we came to church, I wonder if you thought, ah, oh, I'm going to get fed this morning. We come to church to be spiritually fed. We talk about how the word of God sustains us and fills us and feeds us. We feed on God's word. We come to God's presence and we want to feed and drink of the goodness we heard this morning. Taste and see that God is good. And we come to God's house to nourish our spirits and to feed our souls, just like these establishments feed our bodies, we come to church together to feed our souls. Let's take a moment in prayer, and then at the end we'll say the Lord's Prayer, and the words will be on the screen. Father God, we thank you for the gift of food. It's so delicious to eat. It's so wonderful to drink delicious drinks as well. But Father, we know that we need more than food and drink. We need to be in your presence and to feed on your word. Would you this morning feed each one of us as we gather that we might really taste and see that you're good. And so as a body of your people, we pray together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts 
as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. Amen. Let's join together as we sing our, oh no, it's a Bible, do you know, it's, we're adding new aspects to service all the time and I'm finding it hard to keep up with myself. And this is why we love because I read it, because it gives me a little break. But we've, I'm on for the reading today, which is John 6, verses 24 to 35, which will be on our screens. But I still like, there's nothing like a paper copy, is there? We still like the reader. John 6, verses 24 to 35. Once the crowd realized that neither Jesus nor his disciples were there, they got into their boats and went to Capernaum in search of Jesus. When they found him on the other side of the lake, they asked him, Rabbi, when did you get here? Jesus answered, very truly I tell you, you are looking for me not because you saw the signs I performed, but because you ate the loaves and you had your fill. Do not work for food that spoils, but for food that endures to eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. On him, God the Father has placed his seal of approval. Then they asked him, what must we do? What must we do to do the works God requires? Jesus answered, the work of God is this, to believe in the one he has sent. So they asked him, what sign then will you give that we may see it and believe you? What will you do? Our ancestors ate the manna in the wilderness. As it is written, he gave them bread from heaven to eat. Jesus said to them, very truly I tell you, it is not Moses who has given you the bread from heaven, but it is my father who gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is the bread that comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. Sir, they said, always give us this bread. Then Jesus declared, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never go hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. Let's now sing our next song together, Break Thou the Bread of Life.
last week's brilliant story about Jesus feeding the 5,000 leads beautifully into today's passage where Jesus makes that great declaration, I am the bread of life. Jesus tells his disciples, what you witnessed was an amazing miracle, providing food for a home crowd. But now, he tells them, this is so much more than just about lunch. We're talking about a hunger that is a spiritual hunger and thirst. A hunger not like the hunger we spoke of last week, where we become irritable because our bodies need fuel. A hunger that's quite different. This is a hunger that God wants us to have, to hunger and thirst after him. I was wondering where in today's society we see that hunger. Have you been watching the Olympic Games? I think it's brilliant. They have a nice, neat review for us all rather than having to stay up late in the night. But some of the things we've been seeing is just amazing. These athletes are hungry. You don't put in that kind of training without a deep, intense hunger to succeed It's hunger that gets them up at 5 a.m. to train. It's hunger that sustains them. That first album that a songwriter produces is hard to follow on from later in their career because you can't substitute that initial hunger that's in their bellies. I remember watching a clip of the making of The Greatest Showman, a firm favourite film in the Purden House. The filmmakers had no budget. They were desperately trying to raise funds to make the movie. They presented what they had to the studio, walking through the script and the songs, hoping that it will inspire those that have the checkbooks. They come to the last song. Hugh Jackman knows this is the moment. Each person has to pull out all stops to secure funding for their film. You can find the clip on YouTube and when I watched it I had goosebumps and tears streaming down my face. These were hungry people. They sang like their life depended on it. The room was alive with energy and they got their cheque. It was hunger that got them there. God wants us to hunger and thirst after Jesus. He longs to stir within each one of us a hunger that makes us press into him. Hunger is a sign of life. If the kids are off their food, I begin to worry. Oh, that's suspicious what's going on. If a baby isn't feeding, then urgent action is needed. We're designed in such a way that we need food. But like Jesus said, there's so much more that we need than just physical food. I remember many years ago, when I was about 20, I was at a prayer meeting down in Leaf. And I will never forget the words that this man prayed over me. He said, your key is your hunger. Keep hungry for God. That message never left me. And today's passage reminds each one of us to keep that hunger. How hungry are you? It seems interesting to me that at the very start of humanity's story, Adam and Eve ate fruit that they were asked not to. Their appetite for knowledge over God's obedience got them into big trouble. They were hungry for the wrong thing. You may remember last week we spoke of how in our society many are binge eating junk food. We fill our life with the pursuit of knowledge, the pursuit of finance, security, the pursuit of nice things, We hunger and thirst after these things. But we are so often spiritually empty, our souls neglected. There's a prayer by St. Augustine. 
where he said, put your salt on my lips that I would thirst for you. This saint was converted to Christianity in 386, but he prayed a prayer that is as relevant for us today in Bonnie Rig in 2021. God put song on our lips that we might thirst for you. What does it mean to hunger and thirst after God? We live in a culture that's pretty obsessed with food. We calorie count everything. We have traffic light labels on our foods to tell us if there's too much song or too much sugar. We know that we're called to have a balanced diet. We know the things that our bodies need. Protein, vegetables, dairy, carbs. All of this goes towards a healthy body. What are we feeding our spirit? Are we spiritually healthy? Do we have a spiritually balanced diet? Prayer, reading our Bible, showing faith and action to our friends and family. All these things are important to our spiritual health and well-being. Coming to church on Sunday is one thing, but do we feed our spirits during the week in different ways? God longs for a church that is hungry for him, for people who are insatiable for the kingdom. I want to be like my kids who come home and the first thing they say is, what's for tea? I want to come to God's house and say, God, what have you got to feed us today? I want to get up each morning and say, God, I'm hungry. Feed me. If you're hungry, I know God will provide. Jesus turned the baskets of fish and bread and fed a whole crowd. He wants to feed each one of us. And we can get fed in lots of different ways. Through God's word, listening to a Christian CD in the car, reading a book about somebody's testimony of faith. There are limitless ways we can feed and find food. Hanging on our wall is a beautiful, and I know it's an important picture in, in, in this church. It's a picture of the Last Supper. Jesus and his pals sharing food together. But then Jesus makes it into a much more meaningful moment by reminding them of what he declared in our passage today. Jesus is the bread of life. Just as each day we need food and drink to survive, so too we need Jesus each day to fully live, to be all that we're called to be. As you make time in your day to prepare and to eat food, remember Jesus' words found in verse 27. Do not work for food that spoils, but for food that endures to eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. How hungry are you? Let us pray. Father, we join with that prayer of St. Augustine. Put song on our lips that we might hunger and thirst for you. Thank you that you are our great provider who longs to feed your children. Show us ways that we can nourish our spirits in Christ. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's now take another moment to join in song. I heard the voice of Jesus say,
you don't know this, but there was some sermon bingo going on during the sermon. Um, the kids have got some words. Did you get them all? Did you find all the words? Were you missing some? Did you get them all? You didn't? Oh, see, you've got to pay attention to get all the words. Oh, you got pretty much most of them. Well done. What was that? Bonnie like I did, huh? Did you not hear me? See? You better be grateful I've not got questions at the end for you guys either. Let's take a moment once more to turn in prayer as we um, do the really important um, job of remembering others in our worship. Let us pray. Father God, we know that we live in a world that is hungry. Father, as we have spoken of your miracle of feeding the crowds, we know that for many still in the world today, they lack clean water. They lack enough food to eat. Father, we should be utterly ashamed of ourselves. You have provided so much in creation and yet we see that so many are still in need. Father, forgive us. We pray for those who lack life's basic essentials. We pray that you would provide. We pray for organizations and charities that seek to make a difference. And God, we pray that your church would rise up to help those who are hungry and who lack what they need. Father, we recognize too that there is a spiritual hunger within the world. Those filling gaps with relationships and money and work. And yet within each, a longing for something so much greater. Father, we thank you for the comfort that we find in you. We thank you for the Holy Spirit alive within us. Father, we pray for those who long for more, who don't know where to find it. Father, would you meet them in their place of need? And Father, we pray for those in our lives who we love dearly, who need a touch from you those we know who are unwell, who are bereaved, who are lonely and isolated. In the quiet, we name them to you. Father, thank you that you hear our prayers and we pray them all in the powerful name of Jesus. Amen. Let's finish our time together with one more song. The Lord is my shepherd.
And so may each one of us know the goodness of the shepherd with us in all that we do. And may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. <laughs>